Glory to Jesus Christ. Today, salvation has come to this house. We have just got to see with our own eyes salvation come to the house of Jack and come to the house of John. Salvation today has come to their house. And today, no less than Zacchaeus, sitting up in his tree, encountered Jesus Christ. So too today our children, uh, Jack and John Michael, both of them have encountered Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to them, blessed them, gave them new life, forgave their sins, delivered them from the kingdom of darkness, and transferred both of them with us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Nobody knows quite when and how they are going to encounter Christ. Indeed, we can encounter him at any time, on any day, whether it's for the first time or for the millionth time. You never quite know when you were going to run into Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? And I'm sure that both these little boys, when they got up this morning, had no idea that they were going to get wet in church. <laughs> but today, in a very special way, through the sacraments of baptism and chrismation, and shortly through Holy Communion, they will encounter Christ in the most intimate way possible. Zacchaeus didn't know quite what to expect when he climbed his tree looking for Jesus Christ. I'm sure he had no idea that within a few moments he would be giving away half of his property. And as one of the fathers tells us, the reason he only gave away half of his property was so that he would have half of his property left to pay back the people who he had overtaxed. I'm sure that wasn't what he was expecting when he climbed his tree to see Jesus. I don't know what he thought he would see or what would happen to him. But nobody can predict Jesus. Nobody can predict that the chief tax collector of all people, the chief tax collector, the one who collaborates with the Roman occupiers, you know, the one who collaborates with the Gestapo in, in occupied France, that these people that were despised, perhaps with good reason, that they were living in the lap of luxury at the expense of everybody else in the village, that the rabbi, the famous rabbi, would come to such a despised person. That even as Jesus says, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, he puts them on the same level. They're in the same group. They're the unthinkables, the unmentionables, the people who are beyond the pale. And yet somehow, God finds his way to them. Even whilst Jesus is being criticised by the self-righteous clergy. Better watch out. Jesus comes. Jesus encounters us when we least expect it. I don't know what I was expecting when I decided as a, a Protestant 15-year-old on vacation in Spain that I was going to receive Holy Communion at a Mass there. I wasn't expecting that it would uh, lead me here. My bit off more than I can chew, let me tell you. But that's where Christ encountered me. And this is the result. When I encountered Christ, I was led to make the same profession of faith that all of you have renewed today. Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce Satan and all his pride and all of his service and all of his angels? Yes, I do renounce him. Do you commit yourself to Christ? Yes. Do you worship him? I worship him as King and God. That's what our encounter with Jesus Christ calls for. Now we're not evangelicals. We don't believe that it's a once only encounter. Because we all need to encounter every Jesus Christ every day of our lives. It's not just the first time that we encounter Jesus that we need to say like Zacchaeus would have said. God be merciful to me a sinner. Yes I renounce evil. Yes I turn away. Yes I make restitution if I have defrauded anybody. It's not just one time that we need to repent. That's why we have the mystery of our second baptism. 
in the mystery of repentance in the sacrament of confession. Jesus comes to us many times, so we must commit ourselves to Christ many times. We all have renewed this morning our own commitment to Jesus Christ. But when we commit ourselves to Jesus Christ, he then has a plan for us, a future for us. Did you have any idea that this chief tax collector would soon become the local bishop? He became the first bishop of uh, Caesarea. And um, let me just double check this. Or was he the second? I must check this. But the centurion at the cross also was bishop of this area. But I believe that Zacchaeus was the first. Who would have thought that that was Jesus' plan for this man? But the plan for Jesus is always to save and to seek those who are lost, as the gospel tells us. He always goes looking for the lost sheep. Lost sheep can't find their way home. That's why they're lost. They might be stuck in the thorns, stuck in the bushes. So God goes to look for us, to find us when we are lost, when we can't find our own way home. He is very good at looking for lost people. And in the gospel today, he came to one, he found one stuck in a tree. St. Cyril of Alexandria tells us there's no one beyond the reach of Christ. And Jesus extends his gentleness to him. And the church father tells us that if we have experienced the gentleness of Christ, we too will know how to be gentle to each other. Jesus has come on behalf of all sinners in all places that they may forsake their sins and entrust themselves to God, says the church father Origen. And in other words, he's coming to your house. It's not just Zacchaeus' house. Whereas another father said, he received the radiance of the presence of Christ. It's not just Zacchaeus' house. It's not just Jack's house. It's not just John's house. It's your house and my house that Jesus says, I must come to your house today. Hurry down, for I must come to your house today. What would you do if Jesus gave himself an invitation to your house? I know what I would do. It's like, uh, Lord, we can't, we can't have guests right now. We're a big mess. The, we've, we've got puppies at home. The children have left mess. There might be unmentionable things in the corner. Uh, we don't have anything ready. It's a mess. I must come to your house today. Jesus is not worried about the mess if we're in our homes. He's come to clean it up. We can't clean it up ourselves. He has come to clean it up. He invites himself. I am coming. I must come, says the gospel. I must come. To your house today. Imagine what that would be like if Jesus was coming to your house. Maybe all of your friends and family would be there for this special occasion. Maybe you get out that china or those special glasses that you never use. I'm sure you would have the best food available. What a wonderful occasion as Jesus visits with all your friends, with all your loved ones. He has all the time in the world to sit with them, to listen to them. To heal them, to bless them. That day is coming. And Jesus today invites himself into our house. Into the home of our hearts. But as St. Nikolai Velimirovich tells us. Whether or not Christ is able to draw near to my house and to yours. Depends on us. Because he only comes as a warmly invited guest. So today... As Christ comes to us, let us be like Zacchaeus. Let us welcome him joyfully. Let us turn away from whatever our preoccupations are. Let us turn away from whatever our sins are. Let us make any restitution we need to make. And let us joyfully celebrate as Christ comes with, the, with his radiance into our very homes into our very lives, into our very hearts. Glory to Jesus Christ.